Welcome back, this is Giovanni here at Fraptus and what you just heard is the result of the improvisation I am about to begin. As always, I pick the three random techniques from our techniques page and I will use them to improvise a patch from scratch with a lot of trial and error, so let's get started. The first technique is Usta as a quantizer, which is quite odd, so to speak, but we have uh, another technique, which is the complex envelopes number one, based on Falistri, which I think might pair well with this one. I think I've got an idea, I have to check if it is feasible. And then we have an easy one, which is the amplitude modulation number one, which basically takes advantage of brain source um, AM, RM crossfader. We will get into that. But let, let's start with the Usta as a quantizer technique. So I'm gonna set up a very simple sequence to demonstrate this behavior. I'm gonna patch my CVA of track one to control brain source volt per octave, and I'm gonna patch brain source uh, sine wave output. This is a very low tone to my uh, CGM mixer. What I'm going to do then is to go to the pitch shift A which is a, a modulation target for either of these two inputs and I'm gonna assign it to CVA. So, if I patch any CV, like for instance a DC offset coming from, a positive or negative coming from the 321, I'm gonna patch it to CVA, I'm gonna play my sequence And if I am, uh, if I uh, change my voltage uh, slow enough, you can hear that it is quantized to semitones. So if I, so if I set a sequence, I'm gonna transpose my sequence. But if I set just one stage, like a one stage sequence like this, and let it play. And then I am going, to, and if I play with the uh, various scales, so for instance, if I play with a uh, pentatonic minor, which has very few notes, like this one, I am always, I am quantizing the continuous voltage coming from my 3G1 according to a um, pentatonic scale and the cool thing is that the other tracks are still playing as a sequencer so in case you have uh, uh, you are using just uh, three or two tracks of on your usta you may want to consider using a spare one as a quantizer and of course you can set both the cva and b two notes and assign two different voltages to the two uh, streams of impulses thus having a couple of uh, independent quantizer actually and the other thing is that uh, that you may want to keep in mind is that the the cv is the same across all the tracks so if you want to modulate another track with another cv yes you can use a cvb and uh, or you can use the same voltage you're actually quantizing. Anyway, this was the first one. The second one it was the complex envelopes number one. So, um, for this technique we need to set both the Falistris generators to loop, their time scale to long. We're gonna use the, I'm gonna get rid of this for, for now. We are gonna use uh, the yellow one with a very sharp attack, uh, almost, we will set the attack knob fully counterclockwise and the release knob fairly long, like this. And uh, we can keep the, the green one 
as fast as we want, but the point is that it needs to be faster than this one. And then we're gonna play with the max output. And I'm gonna demonstrate it with the, for example, I can use the, the wave folder on my brain, so. Like this, max out to wave folder in. that since I, I set the yellow envelope higher than the green one, the green one will gradually uh, comes out of the envelope, which is the fact that it is having a fixed magnitude and the yellow one is simply above it. So whenever the yellow oscillator is higher than this one, this is the purpose of the max output, you will hear only this. When it gets lower, the green LFO will kick in. There is a way to lock them and uh, for example we can use the yellow end of fall to recall the green rising stage and then speed up the two LFOs to obtain a more rhythmic pattern. I'm gonna stick with the slower tempos. And we can play with different shapes as well. So my idea, and I don't know how it will sound, is to use this instead of my 3 to one to feed my quantizer and then go back to my brain. So sine wave patch CVA. This, is, of course, is way beyond the control, but I can play with these knobs. that I can try to sync the two oscillators to have a sort of uh, counterpoint. So in order to do so, I'm gonna clone my track. Track one over to track two. And then I'm going to set the same pitch shift like this over track 2. Now if I patch my green oscillator I can set this to crossfade and patch it here the point was that I can clone also my track setting setting the same scale to all the tracks and set up a simple sequence There we go. 
so I'm gonna open the reverb now of course with the shibar is quite easy so I'm gonna try to basically working with just two sine waves but you know what I don't quite like the the fact that my my yellow oscillator is quite low so to speak so I may want to add an offset and I can do that by simply transposing one octave up or two octaves up so this is like a quantizer but with an offset Okay, so I had to stop filming for a moment because I accidentally changed the frequency of my Falistris Green generator to audio rate in an attempt to fit the last technique, but by doing so I jeopardized my first technique which was the complex envelopes number one, so I restored the point at where we left and now on to the amplitude modulation section. Now the final technique is quite easy to implement, but it has a major drawback that we will see in a minute and it is based on using the final output instead of this one. With the final output I can bring in the FM modulation, which of course is gonna sound, sorry, the amplitude modulation or the ring modulation as in this case. Now this is amplitude. This is ring, and I can balance between the wave folder and modulated sound and its amplitude modulated copy. The point is that in this specific case, I am controlling the green oscillator with another signal, which is this one. So if I use the same CV to control them both, I would have ended with a more pleasant sound. But now I have to make a choice. Do I want to save polyphony or I have a consonant and tunable amplitude modulation? And uh, I cannot use this uh, oscillator because it is part of the complex envelope uh, process. Well, I can try. try to play with the final output on another channel and perhaps feed the end of rise or the end of fall, doesn't matter, to the dual cascaded frequency divider and then use one of these to feed I'm gonna use it to feed my slew limiter to obtain another envelope that goes uh, twice as slow as this one. And I can use it to blend. To add some accents. So to speak, I can work with this is quite harsh, so I'm gonna filter it with Fumano. It 
let's go back to the all output. Actually, you know what, for this patch, I'm gonna use the odd and even bands in stereo. Why not? Amplitude modulated copy, which I tamed a little bit. And because I, I, I used the Fumana to um, um, make the sound uh, a little bit uh, milder, like to tame it, so to speak. And uh, I can even think about adding another degree of modulation since I already cheated by, by using Fumana like this. Not too exciting per se, but if I combine it with the other one, it can add some texture, some grit. And I can play with the integrator to change the distortion time or the time that my crossfader changes between the wave folder and its amplitude modulated copy like this i can even make it slightly longer since now i am controlling it with this one or even like this and this is it slightly different patch than usual but still I hope you had a good time with it if you want to replicate this video or if you want to create a completely different patch based on the three random techniques that I used you can find the link in the description this is it for today and I will see you next time